look at that wombo fueled win. Thank you, Trevor. I'm here joined by Cabashot after his victory uh, against. Uh, <laughs> Uh, after his win. Now, you picked the Yasuo very early into your draft. Now, it was completely blind into the top lane. Did you have a game plan going into that one? So, actually, um, I don't want to reveal too much, but it wasn't planned for me in the first place. But after what they picked, we figured that it could maybe work better here. So, we decided to go with Yasuo top lane. Okay, so I completely brain farted. You went up against SK, you took it to them. I want to ask you about your expectations going into playoffs because you did very well against one of these lower tier teams, but do you think you can do the same against the likes of an Origin or a Fnatic as you approach those playoff scenarios? Um, yeah, definitely. Like We had uh, a lot of issues in the start of the split, but as uh, the split goes on, we are getting stronger and stronger, and I think we'll perform very well in playoffs. Well, I know you don't want to give away too much, but you played into the Nautilus. You did do that lane swap. Uh, in that scenario, do you think Yasuo is stronger in that matchup? Do you think there's a lot of matchups that Yasuo can straight up win? Uh, actually, not so many in top lane, but I think Nautilus is uh, overrated in top lane, and a lot of people just tend to pick him as a new Maokai. But you can see his flaws and just abuse him easier than the Maokai, like before. So this matchup, it was fine, and our team fight with Oriana, Gregas, Yasuo, Alista was really... Sweet, so it worked really well. Yeah, it definitely did in that game, Cavachard. Once again, congratulations on your victory. We're going to shoot it over to the analyst desk to break down the game and to close out the day. Thank you so much, Pulsa. Kabashard saying it was a pretty sweet combo. Destructive is more what I would call it from that very first fight on that they absolutely dominated the, in the mid lane. It was just all off from there. Crepo. <laughs> yeah, well, he watched the match, you know. He yeah. <laughs> I, I, I streamed enough. I mean, I've. Beautiful Wombo combo. I don't I love it. Yeah, obviously it's really fun to see that. You know, once these these combos connect, and obviously for Gambit it almost felt too much. Everybody wanted to set up the combo. You have the <laughs> Alistair, you have the Oriana, the dive in the middle lane. It was double proc. You know, the Gragas body slam flash, triple pulverized combo, and then all you have to do when you ask for is just wait, press R at the end of the knock up, and you get that extension on the knock up. And they yeah, are beautiful when it comes together. But I feel if you get into a position where you allow Yasuo to three man ulti you, you already made like. You deserve to lose the game. You should never get flanked like that. You should never get exposed like that because it is an obvious telegraph composition. You know, it wants to knock you up, extend that knock up, and then take you down. Don't group up. Oh yeah, that is uh, <laughs> for certain. I mean, as you said, if you get into that spot, it's all up. I don't think I've ever heard you and Trevor quite that excited just yeah, for a mid lane Yeah, the first combo, Trevor. He couldn't stop going on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a great play. And it was. I, I I just like watching a team that is clearly growing every single week, and they find new strategies to use. I mean, this was a, a new lane swap for Gambit, at least. It's something we've seen in NA, we've seen it in, in China and Korea a few times, how you play when you keep the top laner, obviously, alone, uh, and he double jungles in the start, and then you move him up to the lane. And I like that from Gambit, because SK Gaming were clearly a step behind already from that moment in level one in the lane swap, and that was a big problem for them. It, it was a big problem. You talk about Gambit and kind of doing different things, trying new things. The Yasuo top is something I saw earlier this week in Challenger, specifically in the NAR matchup that we've seen over in LCK. Now they're bringing it in. I wasn't exactly convinced on the actual matchup, but Mitch, you and I were talking during the game about kind of a little bit more specifics between Yasuo and Nautilus, and it actually seems to make more sense than you'd maybe think at first. I mean, just, just analyze the matchup, obviously never seen it play it out. I feel like the tempo and the wave manipulation is always on Yasuo's side because he has a shield he can dash in, and if Nautilus wants to counter trade, he will always have to press Riptide, his E, and then he will automatically push the wave. So I feel like either you win that matchup straight up or you gracefully lose it because Nautilus can never zone you off because every time you trade, dash into a creep, he will be forced to push, dash out again, use that shield to your advantage, and then good win wall placements could get to your advantage. And then later on, you have that armor shred from your ultimate as well, so you scale much more because... Yasuo in this composition was the puzzle piece that tied it all together, right? Any knock up and you extend it. So all you need to do is get him through lane, even Stevens on CS, and then just scale into the late game. And I think that's what Gambit achieved to do. I think also just we have to go back and look at the pick and ban phase. I don't really like Ezreal first pick too much because we saw once Gambit start building some engage, they swapped it to AD carry. Mm -hmm. And for a team like SK Gaming who likes to run tanks top lane, it just didn't really fit in. And, and it was like they just got in a lot of problems already from the pick and ban phase and very quickly snowballed. Yeah, good adaptation there from Gambit as well. Fantastic play from them. Well, five more games behind us here in the playoffs drawing closer. Let's look at where.